Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to AWS reInvent 2022. We are live here from the show floor in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're the Cube. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined by John Furrier. John, are you excited for the next segment? I love the innovation story. This next segment is going to be really interesting. An example of ecosystem innovation in action. It'll be great. Yeah, our next guests are actually award-winning. I am, I am very excited about that. Please welcome Alan and Becky from IBM. Thank you both so much for being here. How's the Thank show you. going for you? Becky, you got a, just a platinum smile. I'm going to go to you first. How's the show so far? <laughs> no, it's going great. There's lots of buzz, lots of excitement this year. Of course, three times the number of people, but it's fantastic. Three times the number of people. After wow. last year. Yeah. That is so exciting. So what is that? Do you know what the total is then? I think it's over 55,000. Yeah. Woo! Love me on it. It's okay. a lot, you can tell by it's the hallways, it's crowded. Yeah, right. you, yeah, you can tell by just the energy, and yeah. the, honestly the heat in here right now is pretty good. <laughs> Alan, how are you feeling on the show floor this year? Awesome, awesome. We're meeting a lot of partners, talking to a lot of clients. We're really kind of showing them what the new IBM AWS relationship is all about. So, beautiful time to be here. Well, Alan, why don't you tell us what that partnership is about to start us off? Sure, sure. So the partnership started with a relationship in our consulting services, and Becky's going to talk more about that, right? And it grew, right? This year it grew into the IBM software realm, where we signed an agreement with AWS around May timeframe this year. I love it, so like you said, you're just getting started. Just this getting started. This is the beginning started. of something magic. We're, we're just scratching the surface with this, right? Yeah. But it represents a huge move for IBM to meet our clients where they are, right? Meet them where they are, with IBM technology, enterprise technology they're used to, but with the look and feel and usage model that they're used to with AWS. Absolutely, and so to build on that, you know, we're really excited to be an AWS premier consulting partner. We've had this relationship for a little over five years with AWS. I'd say it's really gone up a notch over the last year or two as we've been working more and more closely, doubling down on our investments, uh, doubling down on our certifications. We've got over 15,000 people certified now almost 16,000 actually, Wow. 14 competencies, 16 service deliveries, and counting. We, we cover a mass of information and services from data, analytics, IOT, AI, all the way to modernization, SAP, security services, right? So the, the, it's a pretty comprehensive relationship, but in addition to the fantastic clients that we both share, we're doing some really great things around joint industry solutions, which I'll talk about in a few minutes and some of those are being launched at the conference this year, so that's even better. But the most exciting thing to me right now is that we just found out that we won the uh, Global Innovator uh, Partner of the Year Award and the LATAM Partner of the Year Award. Wow, So Huge super excited for IBM Consulting to win this. We're honored and uh, it's just a great exciting, exciting part to the conference. The news coming out of this event, we know tomorrow's going to be the big keynote for um, the new head of the ecosystem, Ruba. We're hearing that it's going to be all about the ecosystem, enabling value creation, enabling new kinds of solutions. We heard from the CEO of AWS, this next gen environment's upon us. It's very solution oriented, Absolutely. a lot of technology. It's not an either or, it's an and equation. This is a huge new shift. I won't say shift, a continuation for AWS and you guys we've been covering. So you got the, the and situation going on. Innovation solutions and innovation technology and customers can choose, build a foundation or have it out of the box. What's your reaction to that? Do you think it's going to go well for AWS and IBM? I think it fits well into our partnership, right? The thing you mentioned that I gravitate to the most is the customer gets to choose. And the thing that's been most amazing about the partnership, both of these companies are maniacally focused on the customer, right? And so we've seen that come about as we work on ways for the customer to access our technology, consume the technology, Right? We've sold software on-prem to customers before. Right? Now we're going to be selling SaaS on AWS because we had customers that were on AWS. We're making it so that they can more easily purchase it by being in the marketplace. We're making it so they could draw down their committed spend with AWS. Yeah. The customers like that a lot. Yeah. Right? We've even gone further to, to enable our distributor network and our resellers because a lot of our customers have those relationships right? so they can buy through them. And recently we've enabled the customer to leverage their EDP, their committed spend with AWS, against IBM's ELA and uh, structure, right? So you kind of get a double commit value from a customer point of view. So the amazing part is just been all about the customer. Well, that's interesting. You got the technology relationship with the, uh, AWS. You mentioned how they're engaging with the, with the software consumption. In marketplace, licensed deals, there's all kinds of new business model innovations on top of the consumption and building. 
Then you got the consulting piece, mm -hmm. which is again a big part of, Adam calls it business transformation, which is the result of digital transformation. So digital transformation is the process, the outcome is the business transformation. That's kind of where it all kind of connects. Becky, what's your, what's your, 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 your thoughts on the Amazon consulting relationships? Obviously the awards are great, but. Yeah, yeah. What's the next step? Where does it go from here? I think the best way for me to describe it is to give you some rapid fire client examples. You know, real customer stories, and I think that's where it really, the rubber meets the road, right? So kind of one of the most recent examples are IBM CEO Arvind Krishna in his 3Q results actually mentioned one of our big clients with AWS, which is the Department of Veterans Affairs in the US, and is an AI solution that's helped automate claims processing. So the veterans are trying to get their benefits. They submit the claims, snail mail, phone calls, you know, some in person, some over email. No, gives me all the feels it's here a, when you talk about this. It's a process that yeah. used to take 25 to 30 days depending on the complexity of the claims. Jeez. We've gotten it down with AWS, down to within 24 hours, we can get the veterans what they need really quickly. So, I mean, that's just huge. And it's an exciting story that includes data, analytics, AI, and automation. So that's just one example. You know, we've got examples around SAP, where we've developed a next generation SAP for HANA platform for Philips Carbon Black, hosted on AWS, right? For them, it created an integrated, scalable digital business that cut out 100% the capital cost from on-prem solutions. We've got security solutions around architectures for telecommunications providers, and of course we have lots of examples of migration and modernization and moving workloads using Red Hat to do that. So there's a lot of great client examples. So to me, this is the heart of what we do. Like you said, both companies are really focused on clients, Amazon's customer obsessed, yeah. and doing what we can for our clients together um, is where we get the impact. Yeah, that's one of the things that it, it sounds kind of cliche. Oh, we're going to work backwards from the customer. I know Amazon says that, and they do. You guys are also very customer focused. But the customers are changing. So with, I'd love to get your reaction because we're now in that uh, cloud 2.0, I call that 2.0, or you got the Amazon Classic, my word, and then next gen cloud coming. The customers are different, they're transforming because IT's not a department anymore, it's, the, it's, it's in the DevOps pipeline. The developers are driving a lot of IT, but security and on data ops, it's the, the structural change happening at the customer. How do you guys see that at IBM? I know. Uh, we cover a lot of Red Hat and Arvind talks about this all the time, meeting the customers where they are. Where are they? Where are the customers? Can you share the, your perspective on where they are? It's an astute observation, right? The customer is changing. We have both of those sets of customers, right? We still have the traditional customer, our relationship with central IT, right? And driving governance and all of those things. But the folks that are innovating many times are in the line of business. They're discovering solutions, they're building new things, right? And so we need our offerings to be available to them. We need them to understand how to use them and be convenient for these guys and take them through that process. So that change in the customer is one that we are embracing, right? By making our, our offerings easy to consume, easy to use, and easy to build into solutions, and then easy to parlay into what Central IT needs to do for governance, compliance, and these types of things. It's becoming our new bread and butter. And what's really cool it's is we're- easy button. We've been talking about button. the easy yeah. button a lot on the right. show this week, and if you just if you just described it, it's exactly what people want. Going back, I was going to sorry about that. I was going to say the cool part is that we're co-creating these things with our clients. So we're using things like the Amazon working backward that you just mentioned. Yeah. We're using the IBM Garage methodology to get innovative, to do design working, uh, design thinking workshops, and think about where is that end user, where is that stakeholder, what are they thinking, feeling, doing, saying? How do we make the easier? How do we get the easy button for them? Yeah so that they can have the right solutions for their businesses. We work mostly with lines of business in my part of the organization, um, and they're hungry for that. You know, we had a quote on theCUBE yesterday, Devan, remember one of our guests said, you know, back in the you know, 1990s or 2000s, if you had four production apps, it was considered complex. Yeah. You know, now you got hundreds of workloads, uh, thousands of workloads. So, you know, this end-to-end -end vision that we heard and it's playing out, is getting more complex, but the easy button is where these abstraction layers and technology can come in. So it's, it's getting more complex because there's more stuff, but it's getting easier because you can, you can make it easier. This is a dynamic, share your thoughts on that. It's getting more complex because the cl our clients need to move faster. Right, they need to be more agile, right? So not only are there thousands of applications, there are hundreds of thousands of microservices that are composing those applications. So yeah. they need capabilities that help them not just build, but govern that structure and put the right compliance over that structure. So this Compliance relationship, 
Yeah. This relationship we built with AWS is in our key areas. It's a strategic move, not a small thing for us. It covers things like automation and integration where you need to build that way. It covers things like data and AI where you need to do the analytics. Even things like sustainability where we're totally aligned with what AWS <laughs> yeah. is talking about and trying to do. Right, so it's really a good match made there. It really sounds awesome. It, yeah, it's clear. I want to dig in a little bit. I love the term, and I saw it in my, it stuck out to me in the notes right away, getting ready for y'all. Maniacal. Maniacal about the customer, maniacal about the community. I think that's really clear. When we're talking about 24 days to 24 hours, like the veteran example that you gave right there, which I genuinely felt in my heart, these are the types of collaborations that really impact people's lives. Tell me about some of the other trends or maybe a couple other examples you might have because I think sometimes when when we're when our heads in the clouds, we talk a lot about the tech and the functionality, but we forget it's touching every single person walking around us probably in a different way right now than well, you I think may even be one aware. of the things that's been that our clients have been asking us for is to help coming into this new era, right? So we've come out of a pandemic where a lot of them had to do some really really make some quick decisions. Okay, contact center, everyone, work from home now. Okay, how do we do that? Okay, so we cobbled something together. Now we're back. So what do we do? How do we create digital transformation around that so that we're going forward in a really positive way that works for our clients or for our, our contact center reps who are maybe used to working from home now yeah. versus what our clients need, the response times they need. How, and AWS has all the technology that we're working with like Amazon Connect to be able to pull those things together with some of our software like Watson Assistant. So those types of solutions are coming together out of that need. And now we're moving into the trend where the economy's getting tougher, right? more cost cutting potentially is coming, right? Better efficiencies. How do we get, leverage our solutions and help our clients and customers do that? So I think that's what the customer obsession's about, is making sure we really understand where their pain points are and not just solve them, but maybe get rid of them. Yeah, yeah and, not, and not developing in a silo. I mean, it's a classic exactly. segue problem. You gotta, you gotta be communicating with your community if you want to continue to serve them. And IBM's been serving their community for a very long time, which is super impressive. Yeah. Do you think they're ready for the challenge? Let's do it. So we have a new thing on theCUBE. Oh boy. We didn't warn you about this, but here we go. So Although excited. you told, <laughs> Alan, you mentioned you were feeling very cool with the microphone on, so I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to put you in the hot seat first on this one. <laughs> Not that I don't think Becky's going to smash it, but I feel like you're channeling the power of the microphone. New challenges, uh, treat it like a 30 second Instagram reel style story, a hot take, your thought leadership, money clip, you know, this is your moment. What is, what is the biggest takeaway, most important thing happening at the show this year? Most important thing happening at the show? Well, I'm glad you mentioned it that way because earlier you said we may have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> so this is much That's better than That's actually part that. of the close. Yeah, part of the, okay. Don't worry, don't worry, I haven't it's forgotten that. It's your Instagram reel, go. Alan, I, yeah. That's, <laughs> let's sing, let's sing. Original audio happening here on the Cube, courtesy of Alan and yeah. IBM, I'm so here for it. So, what my takeaway and what I would like for the audience to take away out of this conversation especially, but even broadly, the IBM AWS relationship is really like a landmark type of relationship, right? It's one of the biggest that we've established on both sides. It right? seems huge. I'm it's sorry, huge. you are two monoliths in the world of it's, it's companies. Huge. Like totally. it's huge. Yeah. And it represents a strategic change on both sides, right? With that customer in right? the middle. Yeah. Right? So we're seeing things like you know, AWS is working with us to make sure we're building products the way that an AWS client likes to consume them, right? So that we have the right integration so they get that right look and feel, but they still get the enterprise level capabilities they're used to from IBM, right? So the big takeaway I'd like for people to take is this is a new IBM, it's a new AWS and IBM relationship, right? And so expect more of that goodness, more of those new things coming out of it. That was Excellent. great, well done, you nailed it. And you're going to finish with some acapella, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got the pitch pipe ready? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Becky, what about you? Give us your hot take. Well, so for me, the biggest takeaway is just the way this relationship has grown so much. So like you said, it's the new IBM, it's the new AWS. We were here last year, we had some good things. This year, we're back at the show with joint solutions have been jointly funded and co-created by AWS and IBM. This is huge, this is a really big opportunity and a really big deal that these two companies have come together, identified joint customer needs, and we're going after them together, and we're putting them in the booth. And there are things cool. like smart edge for welding solutions that are out there. Yes. You know, I talked about, and it, you, know, you wouldn't think, okay, well what's that? There's a lot to that, a lot of saving 
when you look at how you do welding, if you apply things like visual AI and auditory AI to make sure a weld is good. I mean, I think these are these things are cool. I geek yeah. out on these things. Every right? vertical. I'm geeking out yeah. with you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every so, vertical is so impacted. It's, they are, and it's so impactful to have AWS just in lockstep with us doing these solutions. It's so different from, yeah. you know, you kind of create something that you think your customers like and then you put yeah, it out there. versus this woven. Yeah, That's the better strategic together. partnership. It's truly a strategic, strategic partnership strategic. and we're really bringing that this year to reInvent and so I'm super excited about congratulations. that. Congratulations. Wow, well congratulations again on your awards, on your new partnership. I can't wait to hear, I mean we're seven months in, eight months into this, this SaaS side of the partnership. Yep. Can't, can't wait to see what we're going to be talking about next year when I we know. have you back on theCUBE <laughs> and maybe again in between now and then. Alan, and Becky, thank you both so much for being here. This was truly a joy, and thank I'm you. sure you gave folks a taste of the new IBM. Yep. Practicing what you preach, Great for Great momentum. Sure. And I'm just, I'm so impressed with the two companies collaborating. For those of us OGs in tech, the big companies never collaborated before. Yeah, yeah. And a joint, you had joint between co -created products and solution. everything else. I yeah, mean, it's really, co-collaboration co is, is, it's a big theme for us at, at all the shows we've been doing this year, but it, it's just nice to see it in practice, too. It's, it's an entirely different thing, well, so well It's like it's well me out of bed in the morning. All right, yeah, congratulations. Great. Very <laughs> clearly, yeah, your energy, your energy is contagious, and I love it, and uh, yeah, this, is, this has been great. Thank all of you at home, or, or at work, or in on the International Space Station, or wherever you might be tuning in from today, for joining us here in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent, where we are live from the show floor, wall-to-wall -wall coverage for three days, with John Furrier, my name is Savannah Peterson. We're theCUBE, the source for high-tech coverage.